In quantum mechanics, the state of the system can be represented by a state vector, herein denoted as the n-ket, where n is an integer that labels the quantum state, such as the energy level. However, this way of representing quantum state is too abstract. For example, in most applications, we need to know the quantum wave functions at different position, from which we can obtain the probability function, or the probability to locate the particle at different location. Consider basis vector x1 whose value is highly localized in the location x1 but zero elsewhere. And similarly for other locations x2 and so on. These basis vectors are obviously orthonormal since their inner product with one another is zero, except with itself. From linear algebra, which we discussed in a separate video, we have shown the completeness relation, which allow us to write the identity as a sum of outer products. In the limit where the discrete step between the basis vector localization position are infinitesimally small, we arrive at an integral version of the completeness relation. Using the completeness relation, we can then express the n-ket in the position basis representation, which is now expressed as a superposition of the position basis vector. With complex amplitudes given by the bracket of x with n, which is the wave function in the position representation. Having written the n ket in the position representation, we can also write a similar expression for the m bra, but with the wave function in its complex conjugate. The complex conjugation is because in the first case, we have the ket n projected onto the basis, while in the second case we have the basis projected onto the bra, m. The inner product of the m ket with n ket can also then be expressed in terms of the integral of the product of the two wave functions. The inner product of the state n with itself is 1, which is known as the normalization condition, which we will revisit again. By the same token, we can also define a set of basis vectors with well-defined momenta, such as p1, p2 and so on. Again, we assume these basis vectors are orthonormal. Similarly, it also has its analogous completeness relation. The state n ket can be expressed in momentum representation by introducing the completeness relation. Here, the wave function in momentum representation is given a symbol different that of the position representation, since the form of the function in general are going to be different. Here is a pictorial representation of the two wave functions, and we know that they are related to each other by Fourier transformation. We write their explicit relations as shown. Often, you might see this written in terms of the wave vector k instead of momentum p, but they are equivalent if one relates momentum p to the Planck constant multiplied by the wave vector k. From the Fourier transformation relating the two wave functions, we can also derive a useful identity. First, we write the two wave functions in terms of their Dirac bracket notation. The n ket on the two side of the equations cancels. And then we multiply by p ket. Using the orthonormality relation of the p basis, we can get rid of the integral and replace p prime with p. We end up with an expression for the inner product of the x ket with p ket, which we call the xp transformation function. Starting again with the Fourier transformation relating the x and p basis, we multiply both sides of the equation with the x prime ket. Then, we can replace the p prime and x prime bracket with the xp transformation identity from previous slide. Since the inner product of x ket with x prime ket is the Dirac delta function, we then arrive at an explicit expression of the Dirac delta function. This is one of the many definitions of the Dirac delta functions. The wave function represents the probability amplitude for finding a particle at given position or momentum, the two functions being related by Fourier transform as we have shown. But the actual probability of finding the particle is given by its modulus square, or the product of the wave function with its complex conjugate. We also write it in terms of bra and ket notations. Recall this being one of the quantum postulates. Since the particle has to be somewhere in space, the probability function integrated over space is 1, a condition called the normalization condition. Lastly, we show that the normalization condition does not change as we go from one representation of the wave function to another. Starting with the integrated probability function, we rewrite it in the Dirac bracket notations, and then insert two completeness relation with the momenta basis. In the next line of equations, we replace the xp brackets with their xp transformation relation. Using the definition of the Dirac delta function we derived earlier, we can replace the integral of the exponential phase over x. Lastly, the Dirac delta function allows us to get rid of one of the integral, and we end up with the integrated probability function over momentum, which has to be 1. This all makes sense since in a closed system, the electron cannot escape, and the norm has to be conserved. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes. 
Join our Free Science Academy Discord channel to discuss science and technology. High school students are welcome to join and post your questions, we will answer them during our free time.